some of the most sinister forces and entrenched interests that anyone can even imagine. Let's rewind all the way back to 1990 when Vanity Fair reported that Trump's former wife, the late Ivana Trump, had told her lawyer that Donald Trump occasionally read from a book of Hitler's collected speeches, My New Order, which he supposedly kept in a cabinet by his bed. And a friend of Trump told the magazine on the record that he had given Trump the book, saying he thought Trump would find it interesting. The threat from outside forces is far less sinister, dangerous, and grave than the threat from within. Hitler's Nazi party came to power partly by pounding the idea that the German government was being overrun by Marxists. The Marxism bedeutet the der Nation. We will root out the communists, Marxists, and the radical left thugs that live like vermin within the confines of our country. When he wrote about rooting out Marxists and Jews, Hitler wrote, quote, there was time enough at home at least to exterminate this vermin. We are now in the process of defeating the radical left, the Marxists, the anarchists, the agitators, the looters. The Kampf gegen den Marxismus wurde damals zum ersten Mal zu einem Kampfziel erhoben. Damals gelobte ich mir zum ersten Mal als unbekannter Eiserer diesen Krieg zu beginnen und nicht zu ruhen, bis endlich diese Erscheinung aus dem deutschen Leben des Heiligen sein würde. In 2018, Trump told his then chief of staff, retired four-star General John Kelly, quote, well, Hitler did a lot of good things. On day one, I will immediately sign a new executive order to cut federal funding for any school pushing critical race theory, transgender insanity, and other inappropriate racial, sexual, or political content on our children. Who would even think that you could allow this? Who would say that this is okay? These people are sick, they're deranged. Everything woke turns to shit. You really do have to ask yourself, where does it stop? The Marxism being preached in our schools is also totally hostile to Judeo-Christian teachings. We will cut federal funding for any school or program pushing critical race theory onto our children. We will teach students to love their country not to hate their country like they're taught right now. On day one, we will begin to find and remove the radical zealots and Marxists who have infiltrated the Federal Department of Education. The we will never allow an angry mob to tear down our statues, erase our history. And we will defend, protect, and preserve American way of life, which began in 1492 when Columbus discovered America. In toppling the heroes of 1776, they seek to dissolve the bonds of love and loyalty that we feel for our country and that we feel for each other. It's all about our children.
und damit dem großen einem der deutschen Geschichte überhaupt. From the heroes and the patriots, the pioneers and the legends who tamed the great wilderness, who settled this vast continent and who laid down the railroads, raised up the skyscrapers and poured out their blood, sweat and tears to build this country into the greatest nation in the history of the world. That is why we pay tribute to generations of American heroes whose names have etched on our monuments and memorials. The radical ideology attacking our country advances under the banner of social justice. But in truth, it would demolish both justice and society. Nichts, was einst groß war, nichts, was mitgeholfen hat, diesen Staat und dieses Volk zu begründen, stark zu machen, wurde nun verschont von diesen zersetzenden und zerbrechenden Angriffen. Their goal is not a better America. Their goal is to end America. Alles herumgezogen, angefangen von den Symbolen der Vergangenheit von Lokalen und Fahren, bis zu den großen Bädern unserer Geschichte. We are Americans, and the future belongs to us. We are going to have a great future. We are going to turn this mess around. This is a horrible thing that's happening to our country. We will make America great again. Es kam die Zeit, da man sich nur dann mit Stolz zum Deutschen bekennen durfte. And we must have a social policy that is pro-family, pro-life, pro-God, and 100% pro-America. Those who seek to erase our heritage want Americans to forget our pride and our great dignity so that we can no longer understand ourselves or America's destiny. I have so many people saying that you can't do this anymore. You can't build these great companies anymore. We condemn the brutality of the Maduro regime, whose socialist policies have turned that nation into a state of abject poverty and despair. We are alarmed by the new calls to adopt socialism in our country. Und wir wollen den Aufbau dieses Volkes vernehmen, nicht nach Milastheorie, die irgendein fremdes Gehirn sind. We don't like communists and we don't like crooked Joe Biden. Wenn die ungeheuren Korruptionsskandale, die sich die marxistisch-sozialdemokratische Regierung... Globalist politicians, and woke multinational corporations. This mixture of, of wealthy elite and communists is reminiscent of some of the worst conspiracy theories uh, of the 20th century. Trump has openly embraced supporters of the far-right conspiracy theory, QAnon. People that are in the dark shadows, people that you haven't heard of, they're, they're people that are on the streets, they're people that are controlling the streets. That looks a, really a great deal like the Protocols of the Elders of Zion, the uh, early 20th century conspiracy that Judeo-Bolsheviks were behind liberalism and controlled the media. International banks plot the destruction of U.S. sovereignty. I know why you're not going to support me, and you know, you're not going to support me because I don't want your money. You don't want to give me money, okay, but that's okay. You want to control your own politician. We will demolish the deep state. We will expel the warmongers from our government, and we will drive out the globalists. We will cast out the communists.
Any Jewish people that vote for a Democrat, I think it shows either a total lack of knowledge or great disloyalty. In my opinion, you vote for a Democrat, you're being very disloyal. Today, Donald Trump is standing by this tweet that's ignited a firestorm. On Saturday, Trump blasted out the graphic, declaring Hillary Clinton the most corrupt candidate ever, over a six-pointed star and dollar bills. The imagery evoking anti-Semitic stereotypes, and it appeared 10 days earlier on a white supremacist message board. More recently, Trump has unapologetically entertained anti-Semites. Trump had Nick Fuentes and Kanye West as dinner guests just last year at Mar-a-Lago. Fuentes, well known as a white nationalist and a Holocaust denier, Kanye West just the month before threatened to go, quote, DEFCON 3 on all caps, Jewish people. West had, according to one of his former business executives, praised Hitler and what the Nazi party achieved for the German people. Wir aber hatten, und das war in weiser Voraussicht geschehen, den deutschen Journalismus so diszipliniert, dass wir in den entscheidenden Augenblicken nicht den Markt zu befehlen brauchten. Ein leiser Wind genügt, um der Presse klar zu machen. Jetzt gibt es keine Diskussionen. I'm going to continue to attack the press. I find the press to be extremely dishonest. I find the political press to be unbelievably dishonest. Nur durch eine geschäftige Presse wurde beim Volk auch oktroyiert worden, mundgerecht gemacht worden. They want to silence us, but we will not be silenced. They will never show this ground. They'll never show this ground. No, no, they're never going to show this ground. They're never going to show it. Isn't it amazing how, you know, they don't even want to look at you, folks. They consider you deplorable and irredeemable also. Die Gegner werfen uns Nationalsozialisten vor und wir insbesondere dass wir intolerante, unverträgliche Menschen sein. These are just dishonest Terrible people. I'm telling you that. Terrible. I'm going to open up our libel laws so we can sue the media. You are the enemy of the people. Hitler made no secret of the fact that a vote for the Nazis was a vote for dictatorship. He says, you're not going to be a dictator, are you? I said, no, 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 other than day one. The U.S. Marshals killed him. That's the way it has to be. There has to be retribution when you have crime like this. To be honest with you, I have to get rid of judges. You catch somebody and they bring them to a court. Then I have an article too, where I have the right to do whatever I want. You have to go see Bill Gates and a lot of different people that really understand what's happening. We have to talk to them, maybe in certain areas, closing that internet up in some way. The leading Republican presidential candidate, Donald Trump, um, and Republicans more broadly, have this plan that they want to put in place if the Republican Party wins the presidency in 2024. And it is a plan to radically change the form of governance that we have in the United States so as to concentrate all the power of the government in the hands of a single leader. Quote, our current executive branch was conceived of by liberals. What's necessary is a complete system overhaul. Quote, what we're trying to do is identify the pockets of independence inside the U.S. government and seize them. The plan is to change the structure of the U.S. government so the next president, the next Republican president, will take direct control of all state power. He would, for example, take over all federal law enforcement and run that directly for his own benefit through the DOJ. There would be no more independence of federal law enforcement. Um, the next president would take control of private business in this country for his own benefit through the powers of the FTC, the Federal Trade Commission. Uh, the next president would revive an old and, I should say, illegal practice called impoundment, which would basically take away the fundamental powers of Congress and put that power to in Trump's hands. So instead of checks and balances and limited government, we'd have more of a, a strongman system of government. We'd have a single leader with all the power of the state personally arrogated to him. 
no other part of the government, no other thing in the country at all would be allowed to constrain him. The former president's allies are developing a plan that would immediately deploy the military to the streets against potential demonstrators. Should we do the pledge? I swear I'm going to vote for Donald Trump. And you know what else they say about my people? The polls. They say, I have the most loyal people. Did you ever see that? Where I could stand in the middle of Fifth Avenue and shoot somebody and I wouldn't lose any voters, okay? We are going to have the largest deportation effort in the history of our country. We're bringing everybody back to where they came from. We have no choice. They come from Africa. They come from Asia. They come from South America. About 15 years before he systematically murdered millions of people, Hitler put that phrase in Mein Kampf, quote, great civilizations died out as a result of contamination of the blood, calling it a poison to the national bloodstream and infecting public life. Hitler was warning about German blood being, as he described it, poisoned by Jews. They're poisoning the blood of our country. That's what they've done. They poison mental institutions and prisons all over the world, not just in South America, not just the three or four countries that we think about, but all over the world. On the 15th of September 1935, the German Reichstag passed the Nuremberg Laws that legally discriminated against Jews. The law for the protection of German blood and German honour, the Reich Citizenship Law, stripped Jews and many other racial minorities of their German citizenship, since it stated that only people with German or related blood could be citizens of the country. Some legal scholars believe you can get rid of birthright citizenship without changing the constitution. With an executive could... order. Exactly. It was always told to me that you needed a constitutional amendment. Right. Guess what? Amendment. You don't. You don't. Now they're saying I can do it just with an executive order. Trump is taking things even further, reportedly planning to round up undocumented immigrants in the U.S. and build detention camps if he's elected to a second term. That's according to an extensive report from the New York Times. The concentration camps were a tool of oppression, not yet a systematic murder. In 1933, to many Germans, they were an acceptable part of the Nazi revolution. Not all of those people were neo-Nazis, believe me. Not all of those people were white supremacists by any stretch. But you also had people that were very fine people. And the press has treated them absolutely unfairly. Jews will not replace us! Jews will not replace us! Jews will not replace us! When Mexico sends its people, they're not sending their best. They're not sending you. They're not sending you. They're sending people that have lots of problems and they're bringing those problems with us. They're bringing drugs, they're bringing crime, they're rapists, and they're destroying the blood of our country. They're destroying the fabric of our country. Winning is somewhat maybe innate. Maybe it's just something you have. You know, you have the winning gene. Hitler was obsessed with the idea of the survival of the fittest, and Goebbels' propaganda films reflected this obsession. Hitler believed human beings were simply animals, and that the strongest animal would always win. If his subordinates were strong enough, then they would succeed without his help. One of the smartest people in the history of MIT, in my blood. All men are created equal. Well, it's not true. Because some are smart. Some aren't. You're born a fighter, and I've seen a lot of people, they want to fight, but they can't. Yeah, 
Aber Herr Professor, es brechen sich doch nicht alle gegenseitig auf. <lacht> Wenn auch das nicht gerade. Aber sie leben alle in einem ständigen Kampf. Dabei wird das Schwache vernichtet. Believe me, if it's good genes, we believe in genes, right? We're allowed to say. Do we believe in the gene thing? I mean, I do. Right? You know, I do. Like they used to say, Secretariat doesn't produce slow horses. Leben, politisch und wirtschaftlich gesehen, gibt es bestimmte Gesetze. Hitler believed the entire world was locked in a permanent struggle in which the stronger must prevail. I always said winning is somewhat maybe innate. Maybe it's just something you have, you know, you have the winning gene. You retweeted somebody from Il Duce 2016. It was a Mussolini quote. It said, it is better to live one day as a lion than 100 years as a sheep. Do you like the quote? Did you know it was sure. Mussolini? It's okay to know it's Mussolini. Yeah, look, Mussolini was Mussolini. It's okay to know. It's a very good quote. It's a very interesting quote. And I know it. I saw it. I saw what, and I know who said it. And one perceives that at the end of it all, it is always the stronger who triumphs. The stronger asserts his will. It's the law of nature. <laughs> Life is pleasant, but it can be war. Over the years, I participated in many battles and have really almost come out very, very victorious every single time. I've beaten many people and companies, and I've won many wars. I have fairly but intelligently earned many billions of dollars, which in a sense was both a scorecard and acknowledgement of my abilities. A lot of it's about the genes, isn't it? Don't you believe? The racehorse theory, you think, was so different? You believe in genes. Some do, some don't. But I had an uncle who was a professor at MIT. A man named Henry Ford, good bloodlines, good bloodlines. If you believe in that stuff, you got good blood. <laughs> you know, I'm proud to have that German blood. There's no question about it. Great stuff. Hitler said that those Germans he considered racially pure were better than anyone else. And many Germans believed him. We have good stuff. We have great genes in this room. We have smart people. Good genes, you have good genes. You have good genes, you know that, right? <laughs> you have good genes. It's in the genes, it's in the blood, right? So we are a failing nation. We are a nation in very serious decline. If we don't get tough, and if we don't get smart and fast, we're not going to have our country anymore. Because you'll never take back our country with weakness. You have to show strength and you have to be strong. ISIS, you know where they have their military? They take it from, we leave it for Iraq, and ISIS comes in and takes it. I see these trucks and these beautiful tanks. They're all American tanks. ISIS is honoring President Obama. He is the founder of ISIS. Death, destruction, terrorism, and weakness. Never before has there been such an egregious display of incompetence and weakness on the world stage. With the military, we're ending woke immediately. You know, I ended woke. Literally, they want our military to be woke. We are a failing nation. We are a nation in decline. And now these radical left lunatics want to interfere with our elections by using law enforcement. This is going to be an election that's based on competence. 
Deutsche Unterhändler unterschreiben, ob Pflicht und die unerfüllbar sind. After the years of unemployment, inflation and political uncertainty, Hitler promised Germany would be reborn and national pride restored. Germany would be a world power once again. Biden and the Radical Democrat Congress single-handedly created the highest inflation in decades. Eine Inflation hat dann unser Volk noch erdulden müssen, die Millionen Menschen um ihre Sparengroschen beraubte. Now the inflation and high interest rates that Joe Biden caused have resulted in the Biden banking crisis. Biden and his enablers in Congress are directly responsible for creating this economic catastrophe. And with Joe Biden at the wheel, it will only get worse. I'm lowering taxes, actually, because I think it's so important for corporations. We are cutting them big league. They spent trillions of dollars wage war on American energy and pursued the socialist joke known as the Green New Deal, an absolute disaster for our country. And they're tired of spending more money on education than any nation in the world per capita. You have a welfare system that really yeah. is, uh, it, it takes away the incentive. I say to the Republicans out there, congressmen, senators, if they don't give you massive cuts, you're going to have to do a default because we're spending money like drunken sailors. We're at 18 trillion in debt. We're very soon going to be a lot more than that. And we're going to reach 24 trillion dollars. When we do that, that's a sacred number because that's a number from which there's almost no recovery. The Nazi party proposed little in the way of detailed policies, but it offered order, discipline, and the personality of Adolf Hitler. The problem I have, I'm not a politician, thank goodness. Politicians are all talk, no action. So I have a reputation for telling it like it is. The first thing I'm going to do is tell you that if I'm elected president, I'm accepting no salary. Do I love what I do. I would rather do what I'm doing than run for president. But I also love the country more. I'm not doing this for fun. I'm doing it because we have to take our country back. Our country is in serious, serious problem. It can happen. Our country has tremendous potential. We have tremendous people. I will bring it back. Bigger and better and stronger than ever before. I am the chosen one. Hitler later talked of being guided by a mystical force he called Providence. And this belief in himself as a kind of messiah was a key part of his charismatic appeal. In 2016, I declared, I am your voice. Today, I add, I am your warrior. I am your justice. And for those who have been wronged and betrayed, I am your retribution. His motivation for retribution is now connected to a dehumanized target, people he calls vermin, 
and is coupled with the means for making it happen. He's the leading Republican candidate for president. There's new reporting on that in Axios under the headline, Trump allies pre-screen loyalists for unprecedented power grab. His inner circle plans to purge anyone viewed as hostile to the hard edge authoritarian sounding plans he calls Agenda 47. The announcement is being Somebody, if I happen to be president and I see somebody who's doing well and beating me very badly, I say, go down and indict them. We will drive out the globalists. We will cast out the communists. We will throw off the sick political class that hates our country. Come, he is the final one. Unseres parlamentarisch demokratischen Systems. There's two ways to go, anger and nationalism, which has been done before in history. Uh, and you can go for nationalism, you can go for anger. Trump is Adolf Hitler? Uh, if you look at what's happening in, um, with Donald Trump and his playing to the lowest common denominator and to the anger in us, you know, Adolf Hitler, we all look at Adolf Hitler in 1940. We should look at Adolf Hitler in 1929. He was a kind of a funny kind of character that said the things that people were thinking. Donald Trump is a dangerous man with the things that he has been saying. Powerful figures on the traditional right still felt they had to negotiate with Hitler. They too wanted to eliminate democracy and destroy the communists. And without Hitler and the Nazis, they had no access to mass support. And in case you're only listening to us on radio, I just donned a red Make America Great Again hat. Hitler stood on the stage of the Bürgerbräukeller on November the 8th. He called for a national revolution to start in Bavaria and overthrow the left-wing government in Berlin. Thousands storming the Capitol after a rally with President Trump, during which he urged them to march on the Capitol, where a joint session of Congress was debating and working to certify the election as our democracy dictates. Instead, they were halted by protesters who smashed through the doors, broke their way into the Capitol, making it to the Senate chamber and throughout the Capitol, overwhelming police. Lawmakers diving for cover told to shelter in place, the country watching, the world watching, what America looked like today. They were stopped by the police at the war memorial at the Feldherrnhalle. The Nazis hoped the army and police, many of whom supported right-wing parties, would join them in a march on Berlin. The police didn't support them. Shots were fired and the marchers were routed. storming the barriers, pushing through this door, Capitol Police unable to hold them back. There were so many chaotic moments, the tense interactions with Capitol Police overwhelmed, members of Congress and their staffs rushing for cover, reporters told not to reveal their whereabouts. This image tonight of a man walking through Statuary Hall carrying a Confederate flag. Some trying to breach the House chamber, armed security barricading the door, keeping them out. Behind them, members were taking shelter, some of them on the floor, some told to grab their gas masks to protect against tear gas. The march to the Capitol following those words from President Trump, speaking to his supporters, who he invited to Washington, saying, you have to show strength, telling them to march to the Hill. Republican lawmakers begging President Trump to tell his supporters to go home. Call it off, Mr. President. We need you to call this off. But for hours while his supporters rampaged through the Capitol, Trump remained inside the White House, 
silent. We know that within 15 minutes of returning to the Oval Office on the morning of the 6th after his famous speech to his supporters, he was informed that his supporters were now breaching the Capitol building. It was at that point that he retreated to the presidential private dining room off the Oval Office and sat for the next three hours watching coverage of the attack unfold on Fox News. We know that his closest advisors and his family members all implored him to send out a tweet or speak to the nation or do something to call off the mob. Instead, he sent out a tweet attacking his own vice president, who at that point was fleeing from the mob. Now, we also heard anecdotal evidence from people who work in a national security capacity inside the White House who were able to listen in on other Secret Service radio transmissions. And that person described agents essentially fearing for their lives, telling people on the other end to say goodbye to their their families. Candace, that's how close it came. That's how much danger they felt that they were in, that they were saying farewell to their own family members. CNN has obtained exclusive recordings that reveal a chaotic last-ditch effort by former President Trump's campaign to get fake elector ballots to D.C. They were trying to get the fake ballots to former Vice President Mike Pence in a final push to overturn the 2020 election. The plan involved a haphazard chain of messengers, staffers for two sitting Republican members of Congress, and talk of even chartering a private jet. All of this to ensure the fake ballots from Michigan and Wisconsin got to the Capitol in time for the Electoral College certification on January 6, 2021. Emails and recordings show new context in the dizzying scope of the unsuccessful fake electors plot. A major piece of special counsel Jack Smith's criminal indictment against Trump. In one set of text exchanges, one of the fake electors refers to the whole plot as a possible steal. As in what we're trying to do here is steal an election. Specifically, while discussing the logistics of the plot, the fake elector says they don't want to have a technicality mess up the possible steal. In this Wisconsin settlement, it is clear that Trump's team and the National Republican Party were all over this fake elector's plot in ways we did not perhaps truly understand. In another exchange, another elector laments, apparently Ken Chesbrough is inviting himself to this thing. And sure enough, these new pictures show Trump lawyer slash skunk at the garden party, Ken Chesbrough, in the room. The Trump team was apparently so involved in this plot in Wisconsin that they provided private security to the fake electors as they gathered together to pretend certify votes for Donald Trump. Hitler was tried along with the other leaders of the putsch in early 1924. The trial was a media sensation with entrance to the court by ticket only. A defiant Hitler told the court, You may pronounce as guilty a thousand times, but the goddess who presides over the eternal court of history will, with a smile, tear in pieces the charge of the public prosecutor and the verdict of this court, for she acquits us. Hitler became famous for his apparently brave stand, but it was a con trick, for he knew as he spoke that the judge would be lenient towards him. Hitler had attempted revolution, incited murder, and his followers had robbed a bank. He served nine months in Landsberg prison. We turn on the news, this channel, any channel, we're always talking about these investigations. And what we're not talking about is organizing that's happening in communities to actually try to build a coalition to defeat American fascist offerings. I think we are kind of lulled into like a passive to being like passive consumers of legal cases, winding on about which, you know, over which we have no control. Instead of doing the thing over which we have immense control, only half of us vote in this country. There's a whole other half of people who could be organized into voting, into actually building a movement to put American fascism in its proper place, which is the dustbin of history. And every moment, that we are kind of obsessing and fixating over will the courts come for him. We're not talking about fixing this the old fashioned way, which is beating it at the ballot box. So what we have to hope for is that if and when he finally becomes the official Republican nominee, it will motivate the sane people to go out and vote against him. That's the hope. We have to hope for that. What happens in a single community is the problem of its own citizens. But it is also the problem of us all. Because as communities go, so goes the nation.